on copyright in general is it's a two-way street. I treat other creators as I wish to be treated. Watch me ink this while I share my thoughts on fan art, copyright, and monetizing your work. Whether you're a hobbyist, an independent artist, at some point you may have struggled to fully understand usage rights. Some aspects of copyright are confusing. For that reason, I see value in sharing experiences openly as a community, especially on topics that may have a stigma around them like fan art, and potentially awkward to talk about like making money from such works. We see fan art everywhere. on social social media, print-on-demand sites, and comic conventions. So we might assume this means it's safe to monetize our fan art? If you've researched this topic, you may have found contradicting answers. I'm not a copyright expert, nor an attorney. This is not legal advice, I'm sharing my viewpoint. If you follow my channel, you know the focus is on accelerating skills for pen and ink drawing and that I feature a range of genres from comic arts to golden age illustrators. One of my favorite learning approaches is doing master studies of various pen masters, including masters whose creations are copyrighted. This is count as fan art. What is fan art? It's broader than pop culture subjects. The term refers to artwork done by anyone who's not the creator of the original work. This also includes derivative creations, where, for example, the artist depicts an iconic character in a new way, interpreted through their own artistic style, which is what I'm doing today with our friend Guts. Even though I'm recreating the subject in a new setting, it's still considered a derivative creation. It's fan art, because it's based on an existing character and I'm not the creator of that original work. It would be illegal for me to monetize this piece or reproductions of it without appropriate permission, such as a usage license. Well, you may be asking yourself then, if it's illegal, why is this practice so widespread? Isn't selling fan art an infringement of copyrights? In North America, the answer is yes. In my country of Canada, it is an infringement and it is illegal. Now here's the thing. The copyright holder of the original work has the right to decide how their work can be used. Some creators and companies, they're against fan art of any kind and they'll issue a cease and desist, a takedown notice, or even a lawsuit. But a lot of them don't. Why? Is it because they don't know about the fan art? Let's take Sam Yang for example. Sam's an influential social media artist and he's done a few homage pieces to the Spider-Verse and selling prints of that fan art on his print-on-demand site. Pretty much anything that is original material is protected by copyright. In most cases, it's straightforward to find out who the who owns it. As such, it was super easy to find copyright information on Spider-Man. Marvel owns Spider-Man. What's less straightforward is who has usage rights from the copyright holder. In this case, Sony purchased rights from Marvel to make all of their Spider-Verse derivatives. But when it comes to smaller creators, if the licensing permission is not clearly labeled on their fan creation, that lack of clarity can be misleading to others. We can't assume that Sam doesn't have license to monetize those derivatives in his print shop. A lot of print-on-demand sites now have fan licensing deals built in. At a glance, I didn't see Marvel or Sony listed as participants of licensing programs on the top print-on-demand sites. But there were big brands on there, including Netflix. I'm not picking on Sam. He's just who first came to mind to explain my example. A lot of high-profile artists are known for and do great fan art. What's less transparent to the public is whether they have permission to monetize those derivative works because knowing this would be really helpful to the rest of us. In search of more specific guidance, I came across many helpful articles and this excellent video podcast here um, where professional artist talks with an actual lawyer. Something mentioned in that conversation struck me. What is legal, what is right are not always the same. This was said in the context of what I mentioned earlier, that the copyright owner has the right to choose how their work can be used. That's the part that invites a gray area for interpretation. You see, some companies like Marvel may choose to allow usage. These companies may even provide guidelines for what's acceptable fan art and what the limitations of commercialization are. Additionally, they'll either grant permission either explicitly by making licenses available or implicitly by deciding not to take action against certain infringements. 
These companies are of the mindset that fan art increases engagement and is good promotion. If there's a positive impact on their sales volume, then they take no issue with fan art. It could be that Marvel is aware of the spider fan art out there and perfectly delighted with the high awareness it brings to their products. <laughs> now, take what I say with a grain of salt here, but the takeaway from what the lawyer said is that some companies tolerate fan art at various levels. They show leniency up to a certain point. There are informal guidelines for what's considered tolerable by copyright holders. And it seems like common sense. If the fan content is non-commercial, you're sharing it for fun or for educational purposes, it's not usually a problem for copyright holders. If you're monetizing fan creations without permission and your sales interfere with the creator's own licensing projects, basically, if your product is competing with theirs in the market for high value, then it's no longer viewed as a symbiotic relationship. Marvel invests a lot in toys and merchandising, so it's best to keep away from that market. But they don't place as much emphasis in the art space. So reading between the lines, it's not likely a problem for copyright holders if you create a few one-of-a-kind artworks or limited edition prints and keep your operations low-key. If it was an issue, then there would be no artist alley at conventions, fans would be disappointed, and the big brands, they want to keep their fans happy. But they'll certainly take action if you start mass producing into consumer products. All this sounds like quite reasonable to me. And here's what I do. You will see some derivative artwork on my website. Ah, but this here derivative is legal. Many of the golden age images I use as reference have entered the public domain. Original works are no longer copyright protected 70 years after the death of their creator, at which time, unless it's extended, become public domain. I aim for mostly original content, and so derivative art sales make approximately 5% of my business model. I'm ethically bound to follow best practice and equally willing to accept responsibility for the tiny portion of non-licensed fan art that I offer for purchase on my website or at convention. What is best practice? Some of the legal options are licensing programs, public domain, fair use, royalty free sites, and asking permission. There's also creative commons and a few other ways I've not mentioned. It's worthwhile to do your own research and you'll find links in the description below including to my blog with additional resources. My stance on copyright in general is it's a two-way street. I treat other creators as I wish to be treated. The question often comes up about references for use in original works. Now, without getting too deep into this topic, my philosophy is as follows. If I'm using references to spark ideas for a concept and from the mashup of multiple references, there's less than a 5% resemblance to my artwork, this is aligned with fair use and I'm not concerned with copyright. If there's more than 5% resemblance to at least one reference, then I either ensure the reference is royalty free or I asked the copyright holder for permission. For my piece here, the photographer granted reference usage permission and in turn, these tattoo artists reached out to confirm permission to use my artwork on their clients. These transactions were conducted in good faith, meaning there's no royalties or license fee, just a written consent. Fan art is an enjoyable way to celebrate a favorite character or to study a master whose style we want to emulate in our own work. It's fun and where a lot of us start in our creative journey. Although my goal is to make original content, recreating the work of my art heroes also brings me joy. There are several avenues to legally sell fan art and the bottom line is we can't make assumptions when it comes to copyright. It's just wise to learn more about it and strive for best practice. Now if tabling at Comic Con sounds interesting to you, watch this video next. Thanks for being here. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a like and I'll see you in the next one.